Dr. Horner, thank you very much for being with us here today. And let me start with this. Dream, dare, demand, you're at there is a very well-known slogan, which if I'm not mistaken, has to do with the American College of Greece as a whole, not just Diri. Am I right? And what do you think of it? That is certainly a school that would be consistent with the dream and the dare mm -hmm. and the demand dimension. Uh, because it was really about a dream for girls' education mm. that the, the school started with. Out of that grew Dere, uh, undergraduate studies and then graduate studies. And then most recently we were joined by ALBA, our third division in 2012, a graduate business education, mm -hmm. founded in 1992 as an independent school and now part of the American College of Greece family. I, so I think, yes, uh, it would apply to all three units because ALBA certainly was also a dream of the Greek business community to establish mm -hmm. something strong that didn't exist at the time, graduate business education. Uh, so I think all, it, all three units would, would be able to, to live under that mm -hmm. banner. This year is an historic year for the American College of Greece. Can you tell us why? For at least two reasons. It's our 140th anniversary. As I said earlier, founded in 1875, so we're 140 years old this year. <laughs> in Greece since 1922 after the Smyrna catastrophe. Um, but it is also the 50th year since we moved to our main campus in mm. Aya Paraskevi. We have a magnificent 65-acre campus on the mountain mm -hmm. overlooking Athens. And we used to be in uh, near the old Athens airport. Mm -hmm. The state moved us to an abandoned quarry. We planted over 30,000 trees over the years and turned it into a forest. And so it's a magnificent uh, campus now, and it's been 50 years since that move was made in 1965. How big is the school? How many it's students almost, you have? Well, it's almost 5,000 students. Uh, we have almost 1,300 students at Pierce, approximately uh, 3,000 students at Dury, and then over 500 students at ALBA in degree programs plus executive education at ALBA. Mm -hmm. How many are the Greeks out of them? It's about, Majority. It, it, yeah, it's about, if you look over the whole, all the school, because Pierce is almost entirely Greek. It's a, a local Greek uh, gymnasium, lyceum curriculum. So o overall, it, it would approach 90% Greek students. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we have students from 67 countries mm -hmm. in the school. Um, and so, and that, that part of the school is growing uh, mm -hmm. substantially now. It's becoming more and more international. How do they find you, I mean, the foreigners? Uh, I think the internet is mm -hmm. helpful, uh, very helpful. Uh, education, I'd say certainly higher education, has become a global industry. Students are moving all around the world. Uh, American students, even though the American higher education system is presumably the best in the world, American students are also looking for international experiences, either for full degrees or for part of their degree program. So. Everybody has developed, institutions and individuals, mm. a, a global mindset about education. Mm. They look for international opportunities. And through the internet and through accrediting agencies, government publications and so forth, people become aware of what, mm. what the options are. And that's, that's really been my point of emphasis in the eight years I've been at the school, is to internationalize uh, the school. Mm -hmm. Reach out, bring more students and faculty to Greece and send our students all over the world to study mm. and internship opportunities. We've done a lot with that. Is it affordable? Is a school affordable in these times of crisis? Uh, I, belie I believe we are, but it's, it's a matter of perspective. Mm. Um, Analyze so, it, please. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, if, we, if you look at Pierce, uh, uh, among the private school options, uh, I think Pierce is certainly one of the strongest schools, but it's priced sort of in the upper middle. So it's not the most expensive. It's, it's more affordable, but I think its quality is, is consistent with the very top schools. Mm -hmm. Dury and Alba, in their respective uh, spheres, are both probably the highest priced options for undergraduate mm -hmm. study or for graduate business studies. Um, but again, I think they represent the absolute top tier of, of quality. But that's from an internal Greek market perspective. Mm -hmm. If you look from the standpoint of the U.S. students, for example, who come to us, and we had over 500 students from the U.S. this past year from almost 120 U.S. universities mm. studying with us, uh, we are a fraction of the cost of tuition in the, in the United States. Mm. In fact, I claim 
that we may be the best American value in the entire world for price mm -hmm. and what you get for quality. Um, so from an American perspective, we're incredibly affordable. Mm. From a Greek perspective, a different calculation yeah. where you have free public university tuition and so forth, uh, we are expensive. Now, what we try to do there is to assist students who have the, economic, the academic ability but perhaps don't have the economic resources mm -hmm. to make it possible. So today, almost 50% of our students, for example, at Dury, and it would be even higher at Alba, receive some form of financial assistance. This has grown enormously mm. in the years of the crisis. Uh, so we are, we are allocating almost five million euros a year in financial assistance. So that brings the price down and makes it more affordable for students. Are your graduates getting jobs? Yes, we're happy to say that they, they are indeed. Uh, obviously, it's, cha it's always challenging when you're moving from the university or undergraduate experience into the into the transition into the professional world is always a challenge. In the U.S., for example, the way this is usually measured is they look at how graduates are doing six months after graduation. Mm -hmm. The U.S. has an unemployment rate of around 5% nationally, mm -hmm. but the youth unemployment rate is higher. So the average university graduate in the U.S. Uh, the, the, the statistic at the moment is about 13% of those who graduate with a U.S. degree in the U.S. are not employed or, or, or are unemployed uh, six months from graduation. So it's almost, it's between double and triple the national mm -hmm. unemployment rate. Now in Greece, as you know, uh, and as I said, the majority of our students are Greek, um, youth unemployment is a huge problem, approaching 60%. Mm -hmm. Over the last three years, six months out, between 12 and 20 percent of our students are, don't have employment. So it's almost the reverse of the U.S. system. We, our students are much more employable uh, mm -hmm. than, um, than, than, what you might, than what you might expect, uh, and lower than, mm -hmm. not higher than in the U.S., mm -hmm. lower than the overall unemployment rate for all people of all ages. Uh, so we work very hard at trying to get our students ready, bringing companies to the, uh, from all over the world to interview on the campus, mm -hmm. and our students are, are getting positions. That's interesting. You have said in one of your interviews that the American College of Greece has no peers in Greece. Can you explain that? Yeah, again, you know, for me, I'm an American, so I look through the American, this American experience. Mm -hmm. And th this is my first experience working outside the United States. I've been in Greece for eight years. Uh, but, but the perspective I bring is, is one from the American context. So, in the United States, by contrast, about 50% of the four-year institutions, undergraduate institutions, universities and colleges in the United States, are non-governmental, private, or we would mm -hmm. call them in the U.S. independent institutions. Most of them not-for-profit. In Greece, what we have is a system where most of the student population, 97% of the university population, is in the public sector because private universities are not allowed. Mm -hmm. And most of the private institutions called private colleges that exist are for profit. So we are not governmental, but we are also not for profit. We, we are not a company, we're not a corporation, nobody owns us. Um, we are a not for profit educational institution organized exactly the way the not-for-profit universities in the U.S., Harvard, Yale, mm. MIT, uh, Duke, Stanford, University of Chicago, Northwestern, they are all organized the way we are as a not-for-profit. But in the, Athens, in the Athens market, mm. there's virtually no one organized like that. Mm. So people understand the public, the private they know primarily mm. are for-profits, we are neither, so we are in this middle ground. Really, it's a public mission of public service and education from a nonprofit base. In the U.S., everyone would understand us. Here, it's, it's difficult to be understood because other, other mm. entities are not organized the way we are. Should Greece allow private universities? What do you think of this? Well, of course, my answer is yes. <laughs> uh, but but it's, it's important, I think, to explore why. Um, as I, as I mentioned, the U.S. system, which is arguably the finest higher education system in the world, 
is characterized by a very complementary relationship between the public universities and the private universities. Most of the privates, as I said, are nonprofits. There are for profits, but they are relatively small uh, segment of the overall educational uh, sector of the, United, of the United States. That diversity of public and private is one of the great strengths of the American system. What you have in Greece, by, because of Article 16 and the Constitution of 1975, is a situation where that complementarity has never been allowed to develop. And the result of that, I think, is that students don't have the choices that they have in the United States or in other educational systems around the world. Uh, institutions are not as accountable to students because the students are driven to them. They don't have to draw them. In the U.S. system, if you don't put out a credible offering for students, you'll be out of business because you will, the students have many, many options, about 5,000 options in the U.S. system. So I think while this is Europe, and Europe is different from the United States by tradition and culture in many ways, I think private universities would give Greece uh, choices for students and, 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 and strength and complementarity to the public system that would serve the society very, very well. Obviously with Article 16 that's a problem, uh, but hopefully it's a problem over time that will get changed uh, because I think it would benefit Greece. You've told me that uh, you've been here for uh, eight years, eight right? Eight years, correct. Do you feel a little bit Greek? Well, I <laughs> feel very close to the Greek people. I work primarily, we, I have almost uh, 700 colleagues that are faculty and staff at the, at the college. Most of them are Greek. And I, I have developed profound uh, sense of attachment to them. And through them, a sense of attachment to the, uh, you know, to, to Greece, I feel very badly for the struggles that Greece is going through. I very much look forward to uh, the days when the crisis will be behind us and Greece will see a much, much better picture, a brighter, a brighter picture. But I've really come to admire my Greek colleagues. I think they have great ability, they have great dedication, They're, they are motivated not just to do good for themselves but to contribute to society. Those are the values that our school represents and they embody those values. So I admire them proud to be a colleague with them and uh, I hope one day to you know to, to celebrate the recovery and and the restoration of real strength and hope uh, that I think Greece deserves. Dr. Horner thank you very much for this interview. My thank pleasure you. thanks for having me.